he had more chances from me than he had deserved. Rachel, you set this for us. Hello, fellow couch potatoes. Welcome to my channel. Let's get to today's video. Holly was hoping Andrew didn't show up at the commitment ceremony so that she can finally and actually speak her truth. I had no one really understanding what I went through. Why, Why would he do that? He's a jackass. During the pre-ceremony chat, Holly lets the bride know she felt isolated at the dinner party. Olivia tells Holly that it's Holly's behavior that had her taking Andrew's side. Oh, this so-called non-adult behavior Oliver dis just displayed during the ceremony and lost all her wholesome girl next door vibe. You're tacky and I hate you. Holly kindly asked Olivia to think about what caused her behavior change. Help me help you. At the commitment ceremony, Holly tells the experts an account of what happened. After the commitment ceremony. 2,000 years later. She says her heart was broken when the group basically attacked her at the dinner party. Being self-aware and knowing she struggles to get her words right, Holly wrote a letter to address the group. Holly tells them she felt alone and attacked. Selena cries, confirming that she does in fact have a heart. It's a secret. Olivia and Jackson have lost their marbles. Completely gone. Sorry. I, I wish, I mean, I wish she had the same support I kind of did when I came in. Like, yeah. Shout out to Dominica for keeping it real. Dom was the only one who didn't buy into Andrew's BS at the party. Well, it's time for Holly to leave the process. Holly says she knows now that she is enough and the experts wish her well. We have no doubt that you're going to find a wonderful partner who is going to appreciate everything that you've talked about tonight. Good luck, Holly. Manifests a different man with pure energies. And hopefully you get it right. Just in case it wasn't clear. <laughs> yeah. Olivia and Jackson are smitten and the couple is going strong. Jackson says Alessandro's sex box opened up a few things for him and Olivia has been a good teacher. But um, <clears throat> Liv's good, a good teacher. So. <laughs> Alessandra calls out Olivia out and Olivia then apologizes to Holly for not using her words to the best of her abilities. I just would like to apologize because when you walked in, I did not use my words to the best of what I could have. That's not an apology. Olivia says she's never felt this way before. I wish my dad could see this, she says, before noting that she has a good man in Jackson. <laughs> no, because like he's a, he's a man. It's a very new feeling. Whatever I'm feeling, it's foreign to me. I'm getting emotional, guys. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. I wish my dad could see this. <laughs> I now see that love can surprise us. Olivia and Jackson both choose to stay. And I have a question. Has your image of Olivia or Jackson been tainted after this episode? Let me know in the comment section below. Lynn and Anthony. Despite a rough start on Married at First Sight, Celine and Anthony's relationship has blossomed throughout Intimacy Week. The couple have dug themselves out of their crisis and turned it around. They've moved back in together and they both decide to stay in the experiment. Great. Amazing. Bye. Bye. I also said stay. And Sam opened up about their struggles, in particular the drama around the five minute kissing task, where Sam wanted Al to show initiative outside a challenge rather than a piece of paper told him to kiss her. In the end, they completed a 30 second kiss instead, but after Sam learned at the dinner party that other brides refused to complete the task, she feels she was pressured into it. We sort of um, we made it up for 30 seconds, and I was like, how was that? You were right? You comfortable? And she's like, yeah, yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Like, I was, I was happy, I was comfortable, I was good. Yeah. I just felt so uncomfortable. He spoke to some of the girls, and some of the girls said that 
they didn't do the kissing task. And then Sam came back to me and just blew her lid. Al admits he worries about touching Sam and Sam says it wasn't good and Alessandra is confused because she was under the impression that affection was what Sam wanted. Al says he can't read Sam and her signals but Sam thinks Al's PDA is all for show. Alessandra makes it clear that consent is important and that no one should do anything that makes them uncomfortable. But Al didn't force anything. Al doesn't know if Sam likes her even though she says she does because of what's happened. So hard, Al. I keep thinking that Sam... I don't know if she even likes me. Oh, visibly upset she is, man. Like, she cares. She oh. likes you. She likes you. The group convinces Al that Sam does like her. Despite their problems, they both decide to stay in the experiment. So he said stay, but I tried to do the S that you did last week. Jack bringing me flowers this morning just honestly, like, made my day. It really did. Ahead of their couple's commitment ceremony, Jack surprised Dominica with a box of flowers and a sweet card. Sorry, I know it, you scared me as well of how beautiful you are. So I just wanted to uh, give you this rose. I thought you were really pretty. Of course. Dom wants to know if her ass looks good and Jack is learning to appreciate her ass. Like if you think my ass looks good, like say that. I need that like affirmation. With that, Dominica believes she's got the best husband. For me, he is like perfect. And after Jackson's opinion tonight, she could very well be onto something. Dominica and Jack both right stay. After we got back from the dinner party, Cody and I, we both realized we were in a really good place and like comforted each other. Back home last night. Oh! We had a good chat at the dinner party last night. Yeah. And he did mention that, like, sex would probably be a good starting point, right? Yeah. Well, like, oh, yeah? Oh, unreal. Watch it. Selena and Cody have overcome their attraction issues, with Selena telling the experts that she's let go of their conflict and that the Intimacy Week challenges have helped them. I think I would ever be able to move past, like, that comment, those comments, and the actions behind those comments. And just you reminding me, like, I need to give him a chance and let him in. It also comes out that the couple consummated their marriage. And Selena says, last night we came home and we had boom, boom, boom. Sex. Yes! <laughs> the other brides and grooms break out in applause. Okay, what? Is it just me or is an applause for having sex a bit strange? Society sucks. Anyway, they both right stay after a successful week, keep on having sex, expert male advisors helpfully before they leave the couch. Keep having sex. <laughs> Ahead of the commitment ceremony, Ella shares her concerns about Mitch being rude to her at the dinner party and Selena is glad she brought that up. The thoughts that cross my mind, I'm like, does he see beyond this? When it's their turn to sit on the couch, the married at first sight experts tell him he is demeaning and condescending. No, that's not blunt. That it's is demeaning. condescending. That's disgusting. Moving on to how they feel about each other, Ella confirms they are getting deeper and it's really nice. Every day, you know, we get closer and deeper and it's always like progressing and getting more open and closer and closer. Mitch says he's loving every day. But yeah, I really like the girl. Look, I'm, I'm loving, loving every day, so... They both decide to stay and kiss before leaving the couch. I just want everything, if we are going to start as friends and move forward, is just try and keep everything on a positive note. Brent and Tamara's latest fight, which kicked off over the volume of a television show resulted in a screaming match and some very harsh words before the second dinner party. The next day, Brent says he can't live a normal life constantly compromising his beliefs in order to satisfy her. Saying yes to her, you know, doing what she asks. 
No, it feels like I'm supposed to sit with just a, a happy face and just say yes. Meanwhile, Tamara thinks he has a bit of a temper, which, to be fair, is true. I mean, the fight was just ridiculous. And it was a temper tantrum. When their turn comes to sit on the couch, the couple immediately brought up the TV volume argument. Tendency in Brent. Brent and I had mentioned before about his moods and his ups and downs and this aggression that he has. They then proceed to have an argument about whether or not Tamara called Brent a cunt. I, I'm not lying. Exactly I'm did. not lying. I did not stand over you and call you that. And I'm the only aggressive one. And then just told me to get wrong with me. Brent goes on to say that Tamara is a very difficult person and Tamara says she is worried about being misunderstood. Listen, I'm worried about being misunderstood and you keep telling me to push my, my personality down because I look like a bitch, blah, blah, blah. I don't. I just don't want to be misunderstood. Brent and Tamara decide to both stay and John asks Tamara and Brent to tell each other what they need in front of the entire group. Brent wants positive vibes and Tamara wants patience and communication and I say good luck to both of you because that ain't gonna happen. But here's the thing, if he does go into his cave for a little bit, give him that space, you gotta come back to it when you're ready. Do we all understand that? Hey Couch Potato, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.